I read this morning while putting together my Shopper Freaks newsletter that Goodwill launched an online marketplace called Goodwill Finds. And basically they take the, basically they curate their best or oddest or most unusual items from all their stores around the country. They send them to one warehouse to get photographed and put onto the website and then you can buy them online. They ship to anywhere. However, the proceeds from the sale of each individual item goes back to the region in which the item was sourced from, which I think is pretty cool. I think the whole idea is pretty phenomenal, um, especially because over the past couple years, the market for secondhand goods online, especially secondhand apparel, has really blown up and they're expecting it to blow up even more in the coming years. So Goodwill's getting into this right at the right time. Well, it led me to an idea, which is basically to take the brilliant idea that Goodwill has executed, and they're doing it to scale because they have, I think, like 3,000 plus stores around the USA or maybe around the world. And so they have a huge pool of stores to source items from and, um, you know, an infrastructure in place to make all this happen. But it got me thinking as I walked down the streets of like Waynesville or small towns, all these little tiny thrift stores that work on a donation basis. So basically they work with churches or organizations, or maybe they are the organization. They uh, collect items and then they sell them in the thrift store and the, and the thrift store gives back to the charity. I know you've seen them because they exist in every, uh, every city in America. And so the idea I had was to basically take what Goodwill just did and turn it into a marketplace for all these other smaller organizations and smaller thrift stores. So basically, imagine this marketplace, think an Amazon style marketplace. These smaller organizations would be responsible only for collecting and curating the items. They would send it into this bigger warehouse. The bigger warehouse would do the cleaning of the item, uh, uh, photography, description, and pricing of the item. And then the proceeds would go back to that individual organization. And so the interesting part about this idea is that these smaller organizations in each city um, could give up their store altogether if they wanted to and just collect the items and send it into this marketplace and get the uh, proceeds back or they could work in, in combination with it and um, only send part of their items there. But the thing is, I feel like collecting is the easier part of the equation. Let's say you're a, you work with a church or you work with um, uh, an organization, you have your drop zone set up where people come and drop off their, their products and stuff. Um, that really doesn't need to be managed very well or very much. It's just a zone that could be open two hours a day on the weekends. People come up and they drop off their items. After the fact is where much more work comes into play. Having to, like I said, clean the item, uh, price it, display it, usually run a small thrift store, deal with hours, paying people, uh, payroll, taxes, coming up with enough to cover your overhead for the rent, and so on and so on. I mean, basically, Every organization that does collections has to also run a store, which comes with all the challenges of running a retail store. And so I thought that this idea could really complement the efforts of these local collection agencies to give them the scale that uh, Goodwill Finds is doing for all of their stores. And so like I said, the small organizations could shut their stores down altogether and say, you know, forget it, we're not gonna deal with this, we're just gonna send the items to these bigger warehouses they take their 30% cut, we get 70%. And I actually think that the organizations could end up with a lot more. One, I think that to scale, a larger organization could price the items better. How much time and resources does a small thrift store have to pricing items? So I think a lot of times items get underpriced because they don't necessarily have the resources or the technology to go through and say, how much is this shirt worth? on the secondhand marketplace. How much is this particular product worth? Uh, whereas you can do things like that to scale a lot more efficiently. Um, so I think they could get more, more per item to make up for the 
amount that the uh, platform would have to take. And I also think that um, they would make more money in the end by not having to have the overhead, like I had said, of running an entire storefront and dealing with payroll and all that stuff. Now, the downside of this idea is that I don't mean to take jobs away from local communities, which a lot of these stores oftentimes in, employ people who otherwise might be have a difficult time seeking employment. So that's there's, there's a, always a upside and a downside to scaling something and to making something more efficient. And oftentimes that downside is labor. But on the flip side of the coin, I, from my experience talking to some of these stores recently, finding people to work in these stores has become a bit of a challenge. And so if they could have a sales channel that didn't rely on a local labor force, I think that, especially in maybe some of the more affluent areas where they have plenty of donations, but they don't have as many um, uh, people coming in to work there, um, it, could, it could be an idea. I mean, I'm just brainstorming here, but that's ultimately the concept. A Amazon-style marketplace for secondhand goods that works in collaboration with local uh, nonprofits that do the collecting and curating of the items that they want to sell from their local community. They ship off the trucks to the larger warehouse. The larger warehouse, you know, sorts, uh, cleans, photographs, writes descriptions for and titles, markets the items, all in, like I said, a much more scalable fashion so that um, uh, the local organization that did the collection receives, I'll say 70%, I'm making up numbers, but I think it would have to be realistically a 30 or 70 split minimum for the platform in order to do all this. Because it's certainly a big undertaking to um, collect all these items, clean them, process But that's the point. It's like local thrift stores are just not going to do it. I've talked to some before. Hey, are you guys online? And they say, well, we've thought about it before. We think we're going to go online at some point. But there's such a big barrier of entry to going online for these stores. You need someone like me who can build a store. It's costly. It's time consuming. You gotta train the people in your store to deal with it. Next thing you know, you know, you're dealing with folks who historically were just putting items on shelves. And now those same folks are responsible for, uh, you know, becoming an e-commerce store manager. It's just a lot to take on and it's not cost effective or scalable for each individual store to do it. So I like the idea of taking um, uh, Goodwill's, Goodwill Finds concept and just making it accessible for all of the smaller organizations around the country to compete in the online space as well. That's my idea. Let me know what you think, for better or for worse. If you love it, tell me. If you hate it, tell me. If it can be improved, let me know. Let's, let's brainstorm here.